Hello, I'm Andrew Dyer, and welcome to another edition of the Round Ball Report, the only show in the area dedicated to holidaying the exploits of the high school, college, and professional basketball teams which play in the Washington metropolitan area. And once again, joining me via telephone is my co-host, former University of Maryland head coach, former University of Maryland All-American <laughs> <laughs> the head girls basketball coach at South Lakes High School and the voice of the Washington Mystics, the one, the only, Christy Winter Scott. Christy. Hey, Andrew. Welcome. I would say what's new, but I guess uh, what's old, and I guess that's Trudy is the uh, head coach and GM of the Mystics. She has um, been relieved of her duties, and the Mystics and Trudy Lacey have parted ways. That is correct. And our first guest, Christy, is going to provide us with a unique and uh, very important perspective, that perspective of the fan. Uh, why don't you introduce him? He's an original member of the Mystic Season Ticket crew, and he's a, a long-term member of the Round Ball Report crew, who's now gone from behind the camera to in front of the camera to, to give us the perspective of the fan. Absolutely. And Edson, we've <clears throat> seen his face. At CTV, but we've also been covering the Mystics since their inception into the WNBA. So we've seen you down at the games as well, giving your support to a fantastic organization who is striving for excellence. And uh, Ed Strand, welcome to the Round Ball Report on the studio set. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Instead of behind the camera. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, it's. I know it was a tough year this year. Last year, obviously, with the, all the injuries to Elena Beard and Moni Curry, that was tough to deal with. But this year, the record was worse than last year. So a change needs to be made. From your perspective as a fan, <clears throat> what do you take from what has occurred? Well, I don't like to see anybody lose a job, especially in this economy. But... Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I was not having any fun any longer. And uh, some of the changes that she was doing, um, it just, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. now, changes in terms of the substitution? Substitutions, the correct. Of, okay. Mm -hmm. So the substitution pattern there, she was a general manager as well. Were you happy with some of the changes she made to the roster? Well, you bring Natalie Novosel in as your number one pick, and you sit her on the bench for the entire year. Uh, you look at the stats. Uh, she may have had maybe 15 minutes the entire season. That's ridiculous for a number one pick. Right. And, and some of the moves, I mean, because the, the fan base is so unique in the WNBA. I mean, when you, when you already have lost a, a lane of beer by free agency to trade a player that, that's so renowned here and beloved as a Marissa Coleman and, and not g come back with a, 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 a equally named player and, and also didn't manifest itself into more success on the court, that move kind of backfired as well. Definitely. And, you know, you have the opportunity of, of you were – I, I still fall back on this. We were one game away from the championship, and you dismantle that entire nucleus that we had. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about um, Julie Plank. And um, when when that happened, that was just devastating as a fan. Right. Now, Christy, as a member of the uh – organization um, are they uh, of course you, you enlightened us that it was a, a change in, in the in the business model when they brought Trudy on have you heard any discussions I know it's it's, it's really fresh because it just happened today are right. they going to look to try to get to that same model meaning try to hire one person to be the GM and the coach uh, even though I, I do have a role with the organization I you know I have not spoken with anyone about what the next step will be or whom will be taking that spot or spots. Um, uh, but, it is, but it is the it is the business model of the league. Uh, a lot of the teams have the dual role of general manager and head coach all in one. So I wouldn't be surprised if they stick with that same model. Ed's got breaking news, Christy. I, I have a uh, news, Christy, that you'll be getting a phone call tomorrow. 
Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> are, you telling me, are you telling me who the next head coach will be? Uh, Probably offering you the job. Offering it to oh, you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, well, I, I don't know about that at all. I, like Andrew said, I have nine jobs, so, you know, I don't know if I need Ten, it. Ten, <laughs> ten. Well, Christy, I mean, it's only a step, a step a little bit better than when you took over South Lakes. They hadn't won a game the year before, right? That's exactly right. And you right. turned them into a powerhouse, so if you could bring them back to prominence, you could do the same for the Mystics, right? <laughs> you guys are really... I've never... I, it's the first time I've ever seen someone blush through a telephone. Well, yes, I, I'm doing that. Uh, no warning on this conversation, however. Yeah. They put up a picture of you not blushing, so it works oh, out great. well. Oh, great. Well, that's good then. <laughs> I, I think I'll stick with the Fifth Amendment on that and, and not make a comment. Now, Ed, to, to, I know the Chrissy's on the hot seat on the on the telephone, but as the perspective of a li lifer season ticket holder, what is it that they need to do? I mean, they can't say anything, but what is it that they need to do to convince you and and the other loyal Mystics fans? Because there are them, there are you aren't the only one. There are others out there to to have them. Uh, rekindle or, 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 or repay you guys for your, reward you for your love and dedication for this organization. Yeah, oh, th very good question. Um, we we have been through some losing seasons, but again, it wasn't fun. Um, I remember with you know traveling with the team as a group of, of fans, you know, during a losing season mm -hmm. to New York or going to Connecticut, going down to Charlotte. At that time, Charlotte mm -hmm. still was in existence. And um, I need to see some commitment from the coach. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm the sorry, organization. from the organization. True commitment. And um, let them coach, let them create a winner. Right. And maybe, depending on how the balls fly next Wednesday, I might renew. Right. So, Christy, are they, are, they're going to a lottery concept as well now with the WNBA? Yes, they are. And the Mystics have a 44% chance of getting that number one overall pick. And we all know that that would be Brittany Griner. Uh, I don't know who else would <laughs> take anyone other than Brittany Griner coming out of the first spot. But um, they will secure the most lottery balls. Um, on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Um, it's on ESPN, and it will be uh, a groundbreaking um, program because they've never done that before. They've always shown the draft in April, but they've never shown the draft lottery for the WNBA. So this is a big draft with Elena Deladon coming out, Skylar Diggins, uh, Taylor Hill from Ohio State. There are a lot of players out there that uh, can, can flat out play. And Sugar Rogers from Georgetown, Tiana Hawkins from Maryland, just some local players who are going to make some noise in the WNBA after their senior seasons this year. Right. And it's interesting. That gives you a sense of how huge, literally and figuratively, they expect Brittany Griner to be. Because uh, when, the, when the NBA first instituted the uh, draft lottery is when Patrick Ewing was coming out. See? And, they, yeah. and, they, and so that gives you a sense of how, how huge they, they really feel her impact is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, most Absolutely. definitely. So if they win the lottery, um, does it matter to you who the coach is after that when you know they're going to get Brittany Griner? Because I know that they're going to bring, be making that phone call to Christy. So <laughs> they, they need to be able to. She's, she's going to need a big to talk to her. And you, oh, you'll be able God. to talk to her. <laughs> Without because your of heels. my height, you're saying? Yes. <laughs> because I'm tall? Yes. <laughs> she had a finesse game. Yeah, sweet. But see, she's going to need that. Right. But mm -hmm. So we can finesse, uh, uh, finesse <laughs> things for you, Christy. What, what, what would you. you like to, what do you think the traits need to be uh, in one of the next coaches? And, and of the folks that are out there, you having your pulse in the league, who do you think might be a, a viable candidate? Well, I, I think that the next person in line needs to be someone who is not necessarily just a motivator because, like I've said several times uh, on the broadcast this past season, that you're on the professional level, you need to be motivating yourselves at this point. You know, um, at the high school level, at the collegiate level, you may need the coach to prod that and bring that out of you. But at the professional level, you need to be coaching professional players that motivate themselves on a daily basis, uh, having a great diet, having a great work ethic, um, first in the gym, last out of the gym. So it has to be someone who can strategize and make uh, late-game decisions and 
have the personnel on the court that can win games. And I think um, what Ed said was, was partially true in terms of um, the organization dismantling the team that was um, a couple games out of going to the finals. I think that, you know, Katie Smith wanted to trade. Uh, so did Lindsey Harding. They wanted to trade. Uh, those players wanted out. So they weren't dismantled by the organization, but they – did leave, and those were key players to a team that did very well. And then you have the injury to another player. So those are three bona fide all stars who are now off your team, and then you lose Monique Curry. So there are a lot of things that happened over the course of that time um, that didn't really have to do with decision making by the organization, but it just, you know, things that happened. Right. Now, Ed, uh, Trudy Lacey, of course, had the role of general manager and head coach. Which uh, of the two roles do you think um, failed the organization the most from from, in, from in, in her role? Was it the GM that didn't get the best players, or her as the coach that didn't make the the best out of the, the players that that she acquired as a GM? Well, um, we had thirty four games, um, and then we had the draft, and we saw a lot of wheeling and dealing throughout the off season before uh, this year we didn't do a lot of uh, finagling mm -hmm. uh, that other teams did to make themselves better right right Christy same question to you which do you think that it was the GM uh, her, her poor job selecting the players or not being able to get the most out of the talent that she's assembled as the GM I think it could go both ways I think you know it's tough when you're losing, I will say that, um, in terms of staying motivated as an athlete. You like to see a, a win, you know, with all of your efforts you're, you're putting in, you're in the ice bath, you're, you know, trying your best, but things just aren't working. I think that a lot of times execution was a problem. So I don't know if there was a disconnect when things broke down and players just being able to read and react off of one another, which you have to do because you hear Cheryl Reeve at Minnesota saying all the time, sometimes you have to break a play to make a play. And and that's okay. And you can't be that rigid as a coach to mm -hmm. stick with, you have to run this play or you're coming out, or you have to run this play or we're not going to win. You know, there can't be that much pressure on, on the situation. But there can be uh, players that can read and react off of one another. And I don't know if the chemistry was there. Uh, with the players that were on the court for the Mystics this year. Now, Ed, uh, as a season ticket holder, um, we we know what you said. You're looking for most importantly as the voice of the fan. What you know, we we know that you want Christy, but if, and just in case it's not Christy, what message do you want Christy to take back to Sheila as to not only you but your grandson and entire family who you take down there? What do you guys want to see as a sign of hope for the future uh, with the Washington Mystics with the choice of the coach? I, I would love to see um, someone like Richie Adubato from someone that with that type of a. Of, he, he knew the game, mm -hmm. and he could get the best out of his players. Um, unfortunately, at that time, um, the GM, uh, Linda, was making deals, and he would find out about it mm. um, <clears throat> after the fact. After the fact, you know, so that, that was tough. But, yeah, I would like someone like that um, again. Well, Ed, you did a great job. You've been a, a staunch supporter of Mystics uh, and, and, and dedicated to the show because even when Coach McAdams would be on there trashing the Mystics, you still would keep a good shot of him on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, much success to you and the organization, and thanks a lot Thank for stepping you. out of this Thank road. You. you did a great job. Thank you. Appreciate All that. All right.